thank you for coming today and thanks for coming to my talks. Really awesome. I always go through this curve of, oh, I've got this topic we're going to talk about, so excited to share it. And then I start writing the talk and I'm like, this is dumb. I'm dumb. Everybody already knows this. Um, why would anyone come? And then people come and it's just so thrilling and exciting. So thank you for coming. Um, and thank you for our sponsors who you should go talk to so you can win all these rad prizes. And if you win them and you don't want them, um, my partner will definitely take that Lego off of your hands. So just find me later and give it to me. That's totally fine. Um, and I just want to preface and say this talk is not about just automating your job. So if you're here because you're like, I don't want to do my job, you can leave like that. Um, just, that's fine. <laughs> just moonwalk out, that's okay. What I'm going to talk about is automating stuff to make doing the actual work part of your job easier and how over maybe 25 years in my career, I've you know managed to do that. Um, and I guess when I train juniors or I work with teams or some of my neurodivergent friends who are like, I cannot be organized, how are you so organized? This talk is sharing the tips for that. So feel free and skip out if you have a second guess and this is not what you were planning on coming to. Um, how did I think this talk might be a good idea? These are the things I face day to day. So especially at Microsoft, which is 24 seven and just um, a flood and a torrent of emails and notifications and chats and missed calls and you know, just all day from every direction, things flying at you. Um, and then I was a sysadmin, so obviously for a lot of my career, so stuff just blowing up or people just suddenly needing a thing and it's super urgent. And that meant it was really hard to plan my day because you can't say no if the server's offline or the cloud is down in Singapore or something like that. Um, and that's those mission critical or time sensitive tasks. They're just really hard to plan for. So sometimes your day just gets wiped out by something that you would never have seen coming. And what I did initially to combat that was just work heaps of extra hours. I just worked tons of hours. I was super stressed. I didn't go social stuff. I, you know, damaged some friendships, my relationships suffered. Um, and I just tried to do that to feel like I had some control over my day, which didn't work. But, you know, I think we all start there as our first try. Um, I was just always, always busy. Like, I just felt so busy all the time, but I just never felt like I got to the bottom of my list ever. And because of that, I gave myself a raft of great health issues from just having too much cortisol and being really stressed and not sleeping properly and having a bad circadian rhythm. Um, and I would venture a few people in the crowd probably in the same place. So hands up if you live that life still. Amazing, okay, cool. Not amazing for you, but amazing for me because my talk will be helpful. Um, so what motivates us? This is the first thing to understand. It's just easy, it's dopamine. It's that little chemical we get in our brains that motivates us to keep doing the thing because it's really rewarding when we get it. And there's a really good study by Harvard recently that sound um, that checking items off your task list is psychologically rewarding. Okay, I've got a preface. <laughs> there was an Irish band playing downstairs from my hotel till like midnight, so I got maybe four hours sleep. And then I was like, it's fine, I'll just have five coffees. So now yeah, you have coffee me. Um, anyway, so it's psychologically rewarding to tick things off a list. In fact, they found in the research that when they had people complete the task and not tick off the list, it was less rewarding they got less dopamine and they were less likely to keep doing the task. So ticking the thing is crazily super effective. The downside to that is in the research they found um, is that you gravitate towards those easy tasks. And we've all seen it if you incentivize your help desk teams on how many five stars they get, they'll just search through the queue and find the password resets. They don't want those. Or if you try to call Services Australia, if you ask for complicated, they just hang up on you apparently. So. Um, we'll just go, well, I'm just going to read my emails and feel like I'm achieving things, but then you never actually chip away at the work that is stressing you out. Uh, cool. So what did I do about that? And this is what worked for me. So take from it what you will. And if you think you have a better idea, please tell me so I can steal it for the next time I give this talk. Um, first step is to understand what motivates me and how I work best. And so as I talk about this, think about what motivates you and how do you work best? And when are you, you know, the most sharp and motivated? See what you can eliminate from your day, just like when you migrate stuff to the cloud, just like when you refactor your code, what can just get chucked away? And then what can we silence? So what doesn't really matter? And what are you just getting swamped with for no reason? What can we automate? Um, can we collate things into fewer places so we just have a more single source of truth? 
Can we rely on routine and habit forming techniques so that we don't have as much cognitive load every day, that decision fatigue? I know there's studies saying it doesn't exist and studies saying it does. It does exist for me. If you ask me decisions all day and then what I want for dinner, I'm like, yeah, I don't know. Like, I can't decide. So um, the studies that say decision fatigue does exist, say you have like 150 decisions a day in you and that's it. So think about that. Which is quite a lot really, but you probably make them early in the morning <laughs> and you're done. Um, one thing I teach the juniors I work with, anyone in the traineeships program, I just try and drill it into people early in career, is if you give people the information they need when they ask you the first time, they don't have to annoy you anymore about it. So if you trickle information, they're going to annoy you constantly. So no update is still an update. If you say nothing happened on the project today before they ask you, they don't have to keep asking you about it. Finally, you need to understand the value of your time. So I understood where my time was most valuable, what my company was actually paying me to do. It's not read emails. Um, and try to prioritise the stuff where I provide the most value. And last of all, after all the health stuff, just to be realistic, like there's never a shortage of work that you could do. There's never a shortage of people who want stuff from you or want your time. It's okay. Like it's just work at the end of the day. If there's anyone in the crowd who's a brain surgeon, that doesn't apply but for everybody else who just works in IT well it'll still be there in the morning okay so understanding what motivates me and how I work best this is the stuff I know about me so think about how it works for you for me I'm the sharpest in the morning so like from 7 30 to 11 I'm really good at solving problems I'm good at figuring out stuff I'm better at avoiding distractions but around 3 to 5 p.m. I just start to tank out I've been trying to uh, go to all those body hacking podcasts and figure out how I can just like stop that dip but I haven't figured it out yet. Um, I don't do well with full days of meetings so I know if I have like four or five big meetings in a day that I'm hosting that require a lot of energy, especially over video now where you have to have even more energy to keep people engaged, I'm just going to be wiped out by the end of the day. Like I'm not going to solve a big problem or you know write a big program by the end of the day. I'm super easily distracted by literally anything when I have a big project and it's hard and I don't know how to get started. My house is like super clean, um, all my washing is done. Uh, and it took a really long time to learn that uh, I don't have to do things immediately just because someone says it's important to them. Like it's okay to ask, why is it so important? Um, this is me like just super easily distracted. He's saying, okay, FAQ, how's it going? Good. What are you working on? Just stuff. How's the stuff going? Um, yep, dolphins sleep. Yep, they're mammals, they do sleep. Please don't message me unless there's a fire and I need to know that I'm on fire and I should leave. So anyway, it's funny. This is a really great quote from a book called The Chaos Machine where he says, dopamine creates that positive association. So when we talked about before dopamine, it's that reward system. And as you've probably all heard being in IT, you know that's what social media platforms have teams of psychologists to teach us to do, is keep our eyes on their screen constantly stay distracted, never focus on anything but your apps and they will always fight for your attention by pinging you with notifications all the time. And so this one talks about like it reinforcing alcoholism or gambling but it also reinforces that procrastination, it reinforces that habit of doing the small easy tasks because you get the dopamine and we love it. Okay, so how do we start to retrain ourselves, how do we start to get on top of it? Step two for me is what can we just chuck away? What can we eliminate? And it's surprising that people don't do this, but I'm ruthless about it. I just unsubscribe from literally everything. Um, I don't need to buy clothes just because I bought clothes from you one time. You don't need to email me 10 times a week about it. Um, monitoring alerting. This might be more infrastructure, but if you're doing full stack or you own an environment, if you're getting a thousand alerts and you're ignoring them all, you're just teaching your team to boy cries about them and ignore even the important alerts. So just tweak those alerts. And I used to say, if you're not getting, going to do an action from the alert, you don't need the alert. You can go look in a portal. You can get a report. You don't need to just know what's happening all the time. So just tweak your alerts to be like, if I get this, I need to go do a thing about it or someone in my team needs to. If you have, who here has like a ton of folders in their inbox full of emails that you haven't read? <laughs> yeah, this one's for you. You don't need those emails, just delete them. Like if you want, if you wanted to read them, you would read them. It's the same as a backlog tasks that are more than 12 months. Oh, you're not doing them, just delete them. Honestly, no one's gonna die, probably. Um, that's recorded. Someone might die, I don't know. There's no going. Um, and then finally, I'm super ruthless about BCC and CC. If you BCC or CC me, it's kind of like 
passive aggressive. Like, you're just maybe suggesting that I should do something. No, if you want me to do something, use your big boy words, ask me to do the thing. Else I'm like, cool, thanks for the FYI, delete and carry on with my life. If people want you to do something, they'll come and ask you for it. You don't need to add more things to your list. Okay, so you can't just delete all your emails, which would be awesome, but you can't. Um, so what can we just silence? Can we start to say, this is my time, this is my day, I want to add some structure to it, I want to figure out how I can focus, and how can I try to give people time on my terms to some degree? And obviously you can't protect your time all the time. If something blows up, it blows up. But day to day, for example, I know I work well in the morning on problems that require you know, brain activity. So I try to protect that time in the morning and then I'll try and squish all my meetings into the middle of the day and then I try to protect some time in the afternoon if I can. So however you, if you think about your circadian rhythm and when you're like the sharpest, try and protect that time. For some people, I know it's in the afternoon, bless you, whoever that was. Um, another thing that you can try and do, I love this meme because it's so true, like I used to buy ringtones, <laughs> who knew? Now if you have a ringtone on, I'm like, get in the sea, go get straight into the ocean. Um, anyway, if anyone can't read that from back, put your hand up and I'll read it out, but I think you can. So this is a simple one, but I think, I'm surprised by how many people, again, don't do this, just silence stuff on your phone. You know, Instagram and Facebook don't pay you for your time, so they should get your time when you decide they get it. All those other apps you have, Uber, whatever, just turn off the notifications. And if you're too nervous, like you might miss out when your mum posts a photo with your head half chopped off on Facebook, that's fine. Um, you can just use the location base, depending on your device, you can use time based. So I have sleep, you know, you can ring me all day long from 10 p.m. to 7 a.m. and I will be blissfully unaware. Or you can ring me while in my work hours and it'll just be silently, I'll just see a missed call. So like, it's up to you to tweak that however works for you and your job, but you can just, you can just silence that stuff and you can start to break that habit to the and the addiction to the dopamine from those apps that actually don't deserve your time more throughout the day. Uh, I do the same in Windows, so I don't know how to do this on Mac or Linux. If you're using, if it's your Linux on the desktop, finally, I don't know how to do that. But if you use Windows like me, you can just do that in Windows. Um, and there's a bunch of options, so you can say um, priority no notifications, so you can allow my boss to message me and not ignore him for four hours of the morning, but everybody else can wait. Um, if you have access to the Microsoft tool set, I use Microsoft Viva to automatically schedule focus time into my calendar. I record this because they said, hmm, you might or might not have internet, so I didn't want the demo to have no internet. Um, so in Viva, you go into the Office 365 portal, go into settings, <clears throat> you choose your work week, so you set your work hours for the week and the days that you work. And you can see that I silence notifications on the weekends because you know, I'll check it if I need to, but I don't need to know everything that's happening. Um, you can set your lunch hours if you have a lunch break at the same time every day. I just am really bad at that and eat whenever I'm hungry. Um, and then you can set your focus time. So there's one, two or four hours. I think two hours a day is in a reasonable time to actually do the work that you have 50 meetings about asking you when you're gonna do the work. So if you can get two hours a day, um, that's reasonable. And I ask it to do that for me in the morning where it can, but if there's meetings booked in the morning, it will schedule it wherever it can within those work hours. So that's where it's sort of better over just having a recurring blocked out time because it will go ahead and shift it around if people book stuff in over the top of your focus time. If you don't have that, you can just schedule a meeting and hope for the best. <laughs> Um, and then I, of course, there's some people that you, pe people say, no, I can't turn off all my notifications because then what if something important happens? Um, which is fair, or you're just addicted to them. Um, but you can allow selective notifications through. So you can say, you know, if my top client messages me or um, help desk asks me for help or something, you can allow that call or that message through using Power Automate and a flow in that. Or well, whatever apps you're using, I'm sure they have a version of this. So this is what I use. Okay, so when it comes to meetings, which I hate more and more, but whatever, they're part of life in IT, um, is that I book time for prep time before I accept the meeting request. So if it's like, hey, um, you have to give a talk on how to be organized, I don't accept the meeting until I book out a block of time um, and know that I can prep for it. Otherwise, I get super stressed when I join a meeting and I was meant to have a bunch of stuff done and I haven't done it. And then I just ramble on. 
Um, so, and I like to layer my calendars up so I can see everything that's happening. So if I have my home calendar and my partner's calendar and everyone else's calendar all laid on top of each other, it's an escape room, I didn't tell you guys. <laughs> you ruined the surprise. <laughs> um, you can see everything at a glance. So you can see what's happening and you, you, don't, you don't like book a big meeting right after you've got a doctor's appointment, you might get stuck in traffic or you know, simple stuff like that. Um, and another thing I like to do is just have an open calendar so people can see the topic of my meeting, meetings and then I have to ping me and say, hey, can I book over that 1 p.m.? No, it's with the CEO, but you can see that. So um, if you just have a big block of time with focus time and meetings booked 24 hours a day, people will just start booking over the top of it. So if you just show people the title of your meeting, um, that's one less thing to get annoyed about. <laughs> I'm so distracted. I'm like, what's happening over there? <laughs> Um, okay, cool. So another way that I like to avoid meetings or m maximize my meeting time, um, my toxic trait, if you will, is to avoid meetings by asking for them to be recorded if I don't need to participate in the meeting, but I do need to know what it's about. Um, and then I just watch a meeting at two times speed and then, um, or use Copilot to uh, summarize it for me in like one paragraph so I don't have to go. So every hour meeting becomes a 20 minute call. And another thing I've discovered is if you tentatively accept the meeting, you can still pop um, questions in the chat afterwards and people will still answer them, so it's even better. To do that, um, they've moved it around. There used to be like a Teams meeting catch-up portal, but now you can just go into Teams, um, you choose Meet. Um, there's this up next, but what I really care about is the recent. So you can see all the meetings here and you can see the deck and the agenda notes and the transcript and you can watch a recording at two times speed. You can skip the intros, you can skip the questions, just get the little bit you need. Save a ton of time. I like to save time by using OneNote um, to take notes so that you can search for them later or put those transcripts automatically in OneNote so you can set up a flow or co-pilot to just drop meeting notes in here for you. Um, and that looks like this, so every meeting I have um, I just drop that in. It has everyone who's attended, a link to the calendar item, a link to the agenda, and everyone's email address. So you just, like, you don't have to type all that stuff out. At the beginning of every meeting, I'm always there madly trying to remember who's who in the call. Um, yeah, so in summary for that section, know how you roll and know what motivates you personally and when you work best in the day, and customize your day to fit with that if you can. And try to work that around your schedule around how you work best if you can start to try and break that notifications addiction um i know we're all addicted but just try your best to start to break it it's very freeing and try to catch up on meetings later that don't need your participation right now you can do it while you're crusty cleaning or doing uh, dishes or driving you can listen to them all and catch up and then of course where you do need notifications or you're having withdrawals you can selectively allow them um, step four is uh, collate things into one place. And that's primarily for me to avoid switching apps. So if I'm in Teams and then someone says book a meeting and then I go to Outlook to book a meeting, I just start reading my emails and then I don't book the meeting and the person's like, why didn't you book the meeting? And um, I just go into a spiral of disorganization. So the more that I can just stay in one place, the less I get discombobulated and don't do the thing I was meaning to do. I think the worst for that is authenticated. Like I pick up my phone to get the authentication code and then I just start checking things to see what's going on. <laughs> Super bad. Um, so for me, that's email as my core place for short tasks and questions and it's Jira for things I can't immediately complete. You can use whatever tools you live in the most, but just try, if you have two or three things that you just live in most of the day, try and filter all the other stuff into those places so you can just stay there. So again, when we think about the dopamine, if you have small tasks and you prioritize them and you close things, you feel really productive and you feel good and you get that dopamine and it just reinforces that behavior. This actually I stole from Ken, who was my old boss in the front row here. Um, and I've kept this tip. It's that in Teams there's a flow that you can have to right click and say book a meeting and it finds a time in the calendar for you and it books the meeting for you um, with the contents of the message that you right clicked on. So it saves messing around and playing calendar or whatever people call it. Um, and then I use Power Automate. So does anyone here use Teams? I know lots of people are Slack. Okay, good. This will be a good tip for you. So for me, the Teams channels tab is just a miserable notification storm oh. that I never click on ever because, no, too many things. So what I did was just make a Power Automate flow that goes out every day 
and gets all the new messages from Teams channels and sends them to me in one email digest that I can just scan through really quickly. Um, it's like a long flow, so if you want to make this and you can't figure out, just find me on my socials and ask me and I can share it with you. But essentially it goes through and sends me the email every day at 2 p.m. when I'm like looking for things to procrastinate, I can procrastinate on small tasks that make me feel good. So essentially you can set the timing to be whatever you like, it goes and gets the time, it looks at the um, messages and says like, go get all my teams and get all the new messages from the last 24 hours. I also have it go out to all the blogs that I follow and all the repos that I care about and add them into my email as well so I can see the Azure updates email, I can see the Cloud Adoption Frameworks GitHub updates because they're all places I never have time to go actually check. So it just sends me every day, here's everything that happened in the world, just as a FYI. Um, so it goes in, it says get messages. I put this in because I thought everyone would be bored if I just talk, so this is a demo. <laughs> um, and then filter them out and then it goes make a message. You can, you can make this look however you like, I just made it pretty simple, but you could go crazy and customize that however you like. And if there's messages, send me an email that says, welcome to your Teams Digest. And then it puts them all in. Um, and then you can again get really crazy and customize that however you like, but I just kept it pretty basic. Um, and that's how it looks to me. Obviously I can't show you the Teams messages because I couldn't find any that weren't like internal company specific, but this is what it looks like. So I have all my blogs that I follow, all the repos that I follow, there's a little link at the top, and that's the same for the Teams channels and messages. You can just click it and go to the Teams message if you need to reply. But for the most part, I find it takes me like one minute to scroll through, see what happened in the company, the announcements channel, in the blog, in that blog, in Azure updates, in the CAF updates, blah, blah, blah. And I just, I'm caught up in like 10 minutes as opposed to hours of just getting distracted everywhere. Um, and so you can use Power Automate if you don't use Teams, if you use Slack, if you use um, Planner, whatever you use, whatever tools you use, there's automations that you can use to filter those tasks that are peripheral into your main flow every day. Um, so I used to use Planner when I was at Microsoft, so I just filtered everything into Planner using flows just the same way. And you can also do things like cross-posting, so if you do social posts or you write blogs, you can just say, when I post here, post here and here and here and here. I don't know if anyone ever used if this then that, but it's a similar, yeah, similar, pretty much the same interface. Um, cool, so then, so I have my emails for like just information, but then when there's something I have to actually do, I like to put it into a Kanban board, and that's because I really enjoy closing tasks um, and seeing where they're in progress and not having to remember. So if you don't use Jira, that's fine, but I like Kanban because I can have a backlog, I can hide some stuff in the backlog, I can prioritize it, I can assign it to other people, which is my favorite thing to do, um, and then I can mark it as done. And then people say, what have you been doing? I, you can look in the done column. How long does it take? You can look in the done column. What are you working on? You can look in the to-do and in progress. So it's like sort of self-service for them. Uh, so that's cool, but then I see you thinking, yeah, that's great, but I have like 20 projects and 20 Jira boards. Um, yeah, me too. So I have a report that I just run so I can click a shortcut and it gives me a big list of all the tasks I have across all the boards. And then I can just prioritize a few of those tasks to try and knock out that week. Um, and they're at the top of the list and everything else is noise. So if you like, you can do that too. Um, and then again, if you're using Jira, there's a bunch of automations in Jira that you can use. I don't use a ton of them except the stuff around grooming the backlog automatically, like adding tags and things that just take ages, but it depends how you work. If you don't use Jira, maybe you can use Trello free if you don't have a team, whoops, if you don't have a team that you work with, Trello is a really good option, so you can just have your own board, um, or if you just got like a family board or something, I've seen people do that. Uh, if you use GitHub already, use GitHub projects, same deal. If you use DevOps, use DevOps. If you use none of those things, um, a lot of people I know love Microsoft To Do. Um, I don't like Microsoft To Do because it's a big list and then I'm like, ah, oh, this is a big list, I'm gonna avoid that big list. But if you like To Do, a lot of people really love it. So you can automate a bunch of stuff to go to To Do, like flag an email, whatever. You can just put it in To Do, up to you. I put a little demo in here but I don't have anything in To Do because I don't use it for mine. But you can see it's really simple, easy to use, you can get on all your devices. So if you just want to have a crack at funneling stuff into one place and getting organized, you could try to do as a starter. Um, the thing I like is if you flag an email, you know, you can have it automatically go in there. If you get a Slack message, you can go in there. And when you close it, oh, I did the flagging email. 
when you close it, it makes a really satisfying little binging noise, so that's nice too. I don't know why I find that so rewarding, but I do. So you flag an email, for example, and then when you go to the flagged emails, it just appears there, and then you can close it. Bing. Anyway. Uh, so in summary, if you can find um, fewer places to have your information stored and you can automate funneling them into one place, you'll be less distracted in your day and you can start to work from one place. And um, if you can, try to use, like, utilize that push technology. So RSS feeder, have a Teams uh, messages go into a met flow. Use If there's in that, use Microsoft Power Automate, whatever automation you can to just go get all the things that you normally have to know about and filter them into one place. Your day will be um, less distracted. Okay, now I'm really worried that there wasn't enough techie stuff in here, so hopefully you're all not bored, but not many people have left, so I think we're good. Um, rely on routine and habits to reduce your cognitive load. So if you think about the 150 decisions that you get to have in a day, if you're in the camp that follows that, if you're in camp, we get decision fatigue, the research team. Um, I block my time Monday morning and Friday afternoon. I know Monday morning, first thing, I want to just figure out my week and feel like I'm on top of everything and I know what's coming and what's, what I need, need to do that week. And Friday afternoon, I like to just tidy up and start fresh on Monday. So I just block the time on my calendar. Um, and if I can, each afternoon, I try to just prioritise my tasks for the next day or at least cross off the things I did or know where I'm at. So I'm not leaving work, just thinking about work. I just go, okay, this is where I got to today. And then I go, do something that's life, not work. Some days um, I just have really bad fatigue and I'm just mush brain and I'm tired or I get crazy bad anxiety and I'm not going to be doing anything great that day. So I keep all those little easy dopamine, um, you know, help desk type tickets for those days and I just knock them all off and I still feel productive and I'm still nice to myself but I don't waste the times when I'm super focused or super onto it doing small easy tasks. So keep them aside, keep them in your list as low priority. And if you have a day where you just can't, you can still knock a few things off and still feel good that you achieve something and not beat yourself up about doing nothing all day. I might be the only person who does that, but I see some people nodding and I feel like we all do it. Um, and again, try to carve out time. So whether it's time to like read some articles you care about, for me that's neuroscience and how it crosses over technology, or do a side project, or go outside and touch some grass, whatever it is, that's important too, right? That little refresh um, refreshes your brain and you can, we've all tried to work on something through the night and in the morning you go, oh, the comma's wrong and it just works. Like you just needed a break. Um, okay, so we've all seen this meme, right? And everybody says to me, oh, that meeting could have been an email. But what they don't understand is a lot of people book a meeting because you don't read the email. So they're like, well, I have to book a meeting with you. So I have FaceTime with you. So you'll answer my question, right? So if you filter things and you're a bit more organized, this can, sometimes stop happening to you because people don't feel like they need to micromanage you or like just harass you for your time. They get the information they need so they're unblocked. Um, and if we look at my time, uh, this is using Beaver Insights. If you have it, you can go check out how you roll in a day. But you can see I try to protect the morning and the afternoon to do admin stuff so people don't feel like they need to constantly chase me. And then I squish all the meetings and stuff in the middle of the day. So if you wanna, if you're like, Okay, that all just relies on me being super structured and having habits, which I can't do or suck at. That's okay. Um, the easiest way to form a new habit is just to click it onto a habit you already have. So for me, it didn't come naturally to do admin in the afternoon and tidy up my board on a Friday afternoon. That didn't come naturally. I just started to form those habits through habit forming and um, just basic psychology. So for example, on a Monday morning or every morning when I have my coffee, I just scroll through, tidy up my board, prioritize my tasks that day, you know, just get a little bit organized while I have my coffee. It's a force of habit now. And the same on a Friday afternoon when I'm getting ready to wrap up the week. I just, um, yeah. So if you think about a routine you already have, whether it's having a coffee in the morning, I don't know what else you do. Like whatever routines you already have, you've already formed those habits. Take advantage of them. Think about the habits you really struggle to form. Like what are you struggling to do? And then how might they work together? So if you... When I wanted to start going to gym and I hadn't gone for ages, but I always walked to the bus in the afternoon, I started to going work gym bus instead of work bus. And then if I skipped gym, I felt weird because I was, that's not my habit. You know, like even when I really didn't want to go to gym, I still went because it feels weird to not do the habitual things. So it was actually harder to skip gym. So give it a try, tell me how it works out for you. But 
science says it will work. Um, cool, so think about when are you the best at completing hard tasks? When are you the sharpest? When are you the most focused? And then try your hardest to protect that time and then use habit forming um, techniques to get that structure around your day. I know that's not technically automating it, but it's automating it in your brain, which is like the best computer ever. Okay, we're right at the end now. So this is that last slide I talked about at the beginning. Thanks for sticking with me. Um, is giving people the information they need so they don't have to annoy you. Um, if you're the only person who knows something, you can't delegate or ignore those requests because you're the only person who knows it and you have to understand other people are trying to do their job too and you're blocking them. So that's why we end up in that spiral of constantly replying to things because we know that. Your time is valuable. So if people can self-service those small, easy questions, help them to do that. Um, clearly communicate things so there's not a lot of follow-up questions. And that was when I see this no hello thing, I think sometimes people miss the point. It's not that I care if you say hi to me, I like that. But what I care about is that it disrupts the flow of what I'm doing. I don't know what you want. And then it's a back and forth of 10 minutes that takes 10 minutes and then I have to context switch back to what I was doing. If you just ask me what I want straight away and I give you all the information you want straight away, it's a two second interaction. I don't have to context switch. So the no hello thing, people get really, some people are like, no, you gotta be polite and say hi before you ask. You don't, just ask for what you want, give people all the information they need, and then you can just carry on with your day and so can they. There's an autoresponder you can put in Teams and stuff for that, by the way, if you're really, really angered by that, but <laughs> I'm not that passive person. If you document things, I know documentation sucks, but you can automate documentation now with most of your pipelines. You can automate documentation with your meeting notes and Copilot can just write notes for you. You don't need to manually write doco anymore, but if you've got the doco, people can go find it and leave you alone. Um, yes, I preempted my own top bullet point. Um, but the most important thing is, and this is what I teach any of the juniors I train, if you've got a perception of confidence by people not having to follow you up, they'll just leave you alone and they know that they you will do the thing you said you will do. So even if I'm gonna be two weeks late on something, if you just tell the person, I'm gonna be two weeks late on this, as soon as you know, they'll just leave you alone when the two weeks comes up because they know. And you won't have all these people fighting and demanding your time, demanding you stop what you're doing, demanding that you do their thing right now because they know when it will be done and they can schedule their stuff around that as well. You might still have some. There's all those project managers that just are relentless. <laughs> but most people will understand that you will get to it and they don't need to harass you. But if you think that a lot of times the people we work with that are annoying like that, you've trained them to be that way because if they don't annoy you, they never get the thing that they wanted. And then last of all, just give yourself a break. Like you're gonna have days where life is blowing up or you're tired or you had COVID and you can't think straight or I don't know, the world feels like it's ending and you just can't cope. So that's okay. Some days it's okay. And they're the days, if you feel really bad, you can complete some small tasks off your list or just give yourself a break. All that work will be there. And um, brain surgeons aside, um, it, everybody will survive one more day. Okay, so one thing I like to ask when people are really persistent about that, um, no, 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 it needs to be done right now. It's kind of passive aggressive, but it's always worked. It's just ask them when they need it. When did you know you needed this? And if it was like more than one hour, they can wait. <laughs> They've been waiting two weeks before they told me, they can wait two weeks before I can do it. Um, yeah, and life is important. So in summary, understand what motivates you and how you work best, see what you can eliminate, see what you can silence, and see what you can automate. Collate as much as you can to have one source of truth and rely on routine and habit forming techniques to just reduce cognitive load and save up those 150 decisions a day. Give people the information they need to not annoy you. Um, no update, still an update and people start to really appreciate that they don't have to chase you up. And understand the value of your time and give yourself a break. Um, thank you to the awesome sponsors and thanks for having me and thank you for spending 45 minutes with me. This is my socials, uh, feel free to catch me if you have some amazing automation that's like AI, cool, and I didn't have it up here, please send it to me because I would like to use it and also talk about it. Um, so please hit me up. I don't have Twitter anymore, but I have new Twitter. Please go, so catch me there or on LinkedIn. And yeah, that's me. Thanks so much. <laughs>